I was thinking who would I have first to come back from the summer hiatus and who other than Joel Cage. Also, by the way, it's been like months. It's been a like, long time. New we venue. Were, Beautiful new venue, new yes. Venue. Live on location Fantastic. at the Levy household. And lots of natural light. It's uh, Really? I find my house so dark. No, it feels good. Yeah. I, I like Well, the, the window is brand new, by the way. We never had that window before. Mm, I like the we broke. We blew the back of the wall out. And um, here's a great little story about having the right people experience people yeah so i had um a lovely young designer that was recommended to me up and coming she did some of what you see in the background she was lovely definitely um overpriced and i'm happy to pay right and i kept saying we have this whole wall i'm like my house is so dark i think i still need more pot lights the electrician always says you don't need anymore i need more and i said what do i do with this whole wall and she kept saying what if we do like a, a photo mo like a photo wall or we do a big piece of art and I'm like, eh, we have one over there. I've got over there. No, I like could never like, I, I listen, I don't, I do not tell you that I am a designer in any way, shape or form. But when I know, I know. Right. That's it. Like I like, and you've been I in a lot of houses. And I've been, I have? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I happen to be, houses. I may have been in a couple of houses and I have a very good uh, friend of mine who is uh, the foreman for Jazz Build, by the way. Jazz Build Group, amazing if you ever think about doing any renovations, building a house, whatever you want, they'll do everything. Anyway, so they come in, Marvin, who's been running the business um, forever, walks in, he goes, that needs a window. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> He's in my house for two seconds. He's like, why don't you have a window there? Why is there no window there? It's, it's actually really great. Right? Yeah. It really, it goes to show someone who's been in the business for a long time, doesn't have to overthink it. He's been in a million houses. He's designed a million houses. He's been part of the construction of it. He knows that that, house, that wall needed a window. But I bet you before the window, it was much more closed off. Like you felt more It was off. so dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like pe I'm telling you, people have come who've been in my house a million times. They're like, it transformed my yeah. entire one window. Yeah. It wasn't cheap. One window though. Yeah. Anyway, we're not talking about windows, okay, windows, but we are talking about time in the business today. Sure. And um, Joel and I do a lot of work together. We do. And we see a lot. <laughs> we're in the trenches together a lot. And I um, have been saying this amongst people who ask me, for example, what's going on in the market? Yep. What's happening in the market? What are you seeing in the market? I think I did one episode about this a little bit on a high level with Natalka, kind of sharing it with her um, about what I was seeing on the streets. The streets. And we even talk about it like just. We literally talk about it like the in time. the afternoon, all the time. Like, like, like every day. Interest almost. rates and interest rate announcements. And we every kind day. of, you know, we're kind of like, you know, actual junkies for the market. And we actually really want to know. Adrenaline junkies. We're adrenaline junkies. No, but we want to know. Yeah. And the, part of the reason we want to know is because we want to try and help our clients. Mm -hmm. But it also helps us because we also run businesses and we're trying to figure out what's A thousand coming, percent. You know? And one of the things that we have come to the conclusion, and I'll say we, and I have talked to other agents about this, is that in the last year, let's go year. Sure. The last year, there has been a massive shift in expectations. I think so. On the buyer and seller side. I think so. And I have never in my life needed to be so precise in my agreement of purchase and sale. And I'm, by the way, for all you people now, haters coming after us to say we should have been precise on my agreement of purchase and sale to begin with, there's, there is a level of just human decency that so. doesn't need to be written in. And thank you, I have a legal perspective on this. I think so. I think that, for example, I remember years ago, there was an agent who, who wrote, and I'm talking like five, six years ago, yep. okay? in a normal market before we knew COVID, yep. who wrote in this uh, clause that said, and he was from a good brokerage from Sage. Yep. I, I have high respect for Evan and his partners. Yep. And I said, he said, um, uh, the clause was something to the effect that the all walls will be returned to normal uh. or something, and there'll be no, every hole will be patched and repainted, whatever. And I called him and I screamed at him. Like, what, what I was like, what are you bothering me what about? What are you doing? No, literally, what are you doing? Like, you want my client to repaint the whole house? Like, is there something not, wrong with you? Not gonna do On top of the fact that he was also lowballing us, but whatever, it's fine. Deal got done. Now, I tell like an agent that works on my team, 
make sure that that is in every single offer. No, I'm, I'm not joking. At least put it in there, at least to show your client. We've had a client this year, and I also feel part of education on our part much more than ever before. First time buyer, um, walked into his condo, um, and they had patched the wall, like it had yeah, been. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And he said, I can see the patch. Right. Like I, it looks horrible. Yep. And in my world, I, I mean, I think there are other agents who would say, too bad, so sad. I'm not throwing them under the bus. But in my world, it's on me. I didn't do the education ahead of time. I'm going to eat it. I had a handyman go in and I had them paint that wall. No problem. End but, of but, story. But just to be clear. That's no, not the expectation. It's, it's, it, that's, you are the exception. You're the exception. I'm kind of the exception with customer, emails, with, yeah. with trying customer service, with, yeah. with trying to do a little bit more. And I, I, I think that's not my experience with agents. Most agents would have simply said, well, you know, you were going to repaint anyway, you know, and I, and I don't, I don't think an agent, most of the agents I know wouldn't eat it. Uh, they would just say again, too bad. So sad. That's what you're buying. And, but the thing you and I were talking about also before is just human decency, decency that what we're finding is people are just being mean at closing time and we can't really figure out what the change is. Yes, they're not getting 2021 20, prices, right? The seller- Well, that's where it started. You know, that's where I, it starts, right? Right, it started with the sellers being pissed that they are not selling the 2021 20, prices yeah. and they and the, their neighbor sold for whatever more than them and they're all not getting the, it. And it's nonsense. not sell, right, okay, fine. And then, and which is, in, I just had the uh, my good friend Jay on about financial, it, you know, a financial advisor talking about the markets, like time in the market, timing the market it is what it is and there's nothing we can do as as uh, i like to say the market doesn't care about our feelings no it doesn't you, care about my feelings i'll tell you, know, you that much you know i tell personal stories but like so just to give you an example timing in the market my mortgage at 2.74 is coming up mm. and it's going to be you know a high fours for yeah. a three-year fixed are you going to go fixed um You know, that's what people are saying. Uh, variable, variable, Some variable. people do. I've never been a variable. Oh, I've always, I've always been a, been a variable. Fix. So these are you just... You have. You're diff conservative. Different I would not have thought you were a conservative uh -uh. guy. Different philosophies. Yeah. But but the point is, it's timing, right? Because, right. you know, I'm never getting that 274 back. Like all those people no in the what. U.S. that are sitting with like 30-year yes, mortgages yeah. and, and at 2%. And we talked about 30-year AM. 30-year yeah, 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 yeah. AM is ridiculous, right? Anyway, so, yeah. Sorry. So, no, no, no. It's and then buyers are pissed because interest rate, like everything's so expensive. Everything's expensive. So everything's expensive. I think the last quote I got for a client of mine was on a million dollar mortgage yeah. was $6,000. Yeah. $6,000 right. right. for a million dollar mortgage on a three year fixed or variable. They're just about on par right now. Okay, fine. They're pretty close. They're and, pretty and, close. And so what that means though, what that translates $6, to is- $6,000, how many people can afford $6,000 and what can you buy under a million dollars? The buyer also doesn't have extra money. So when they walk into their place and that wall hasn't been repainted, all they're thinking is really, how do I get that? How do I get it done? And you know, I can't afford it. Well, that's, that's a major shift also. It's like, and I have, I have sellers who are like, yeah, we know our bathroom's old, but they can, you know, redo it. And I'm like, they don't want to. No. I'm just letting you know, they don't want to because it's a fortune and no one knows how much it's going to be. And they're already paying a gazillion dollars and they've already stretched their budget. And so they want, you know what's selling right now? Perfect. Yeah. That's what's selling. It doesn't matter where it doesn't, even the co perfect condo. And again, when you say perfect, well priced but perfect house i went for a house the other day for a client in the middle of july yeah in oakwood village yeah okay but it was the perfect house in oakwood village it had parking it had a great backyard it had a great usable basement and it was a three suitable bedroom and it had great bathrooms Fantastic. two bathrooms upstairs oakwood village Fantastic. it was per and it was great it was and it was priced well my good um buddy josh howard did a great yeah. job yeah good boy And it sold. Yeah. So, but it was brand new. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. go and see what's sitting on the market right now. It's everything that needs a gut job. And I have a, I have a friend who used to flip houses. Yep. And I hope to have her on the show soon. Um, and she's doing it in cottage country now. Because you can't, like, it, it, it's just, there's nothing, there's, there's no opportunity to do it here any, anymore anyway. But... No one's buying. 
you know, when we talk about our our buyers' uh, expectations and and our sellers' expectations, the one thing that I do want to say about the agreements of purchase and sale is. You it's not, not worth the paper yeah, it's written you, on. We could write, no, but we could write like a 20 page schedule with like an architectural and, you know, every standard. And we could have a mechanical engineer talk about load bearing walls. And at the end of the day, it's this very visceral, emotional thing that our clients will find um, and that, that we're trying to navigate as like pseudo psychologists almost. Oh yeah. Right? Cuz yeah, we're managing yeah. their emotional response. Marital, so you're a you're, yeah. you're a marriage counselor, you're yeah. a person. So it is. It's a very emotional um it's a very emotional the journey, process for sure. Right? The journey I think from all my start years in therapy have definitely helped me uh, being me a really too, good Me agent. too. And I think I think that, you know, sometimes it might not be about the actual financial implications of the wall or a crack or something, but it's this emotional thing where they get they 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 want justice, and we always say like, "There's the agreement doesn't give you justice. There's no justice, and sometimes things go wrong or they right. don't meet your perfect expectations." And I think that's so difficult. I, I wanted to talk about this specifically because. A, I, I'm seeing this as a major trend that I don't think is going to go anywhere. Yeah. I am, and, and again, we just had came off a conversation about you know expecting that. So the markets and housing will probably be tumultuous up oh. until 2026, 27. Let's I see say that. because I agree, I agree. Like to the end of 2025, we have no idea what's happening. Well, no. You know? So we like, got the U.S. Like, election this year. Yeah, November, of course. So U.S. U.S. financial markets will be great. Yeah. They'll keep and and the Feds will lower. It'll be. It, it's always a good year, an election year. Okay, fine. So then the year after is always a bad year. Yeah. But then that year is the year that we have the Canadian election. So next year we have the Canadian election. Oh, so it'll be an interesting. And then it'll be the year. So I think we're in a two to three year kind of up and down roller coaster. I think everybody needs to be ready for that. But I think it will continue this trend of um, uncertainty of uh, people being nervous. And I know that you know this. We've been on calls together managing expectations and talking clients off ledges. And you've got clients who are like, yep, I get it. Yep, I get it. And other clients were like, but what if, but what if, what if. And you know what's weird? The clients range from... Six hundred thousand dollar first time home. Oh, it doesn't matter about price. price. No, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Price doesn't matter. I think it's the same thing. I hate to use COVID <laughs> so as an example. Yeah. But COVID is an example of where you saw people's risk assessment in their lives. Absolutely. Are you wearing a mask and staying six feet away still, or were you having people in your house at the time? I'm not getting political. I'm just saying it was a very, very black. Everyone was in the same bubble and everyone you saw who they were at that time. Absolutely. And so when you go to buy a house or sell a house, I, I would say it, it, I have clients who have gazillions of dollars who do not think twice, just like the first time home buyer and then the opposite as yeah. well. And, 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 and we, it's a we've had that amongst our shared clients. You know, we found these experiences are not, you know, one might think, oh, the person who's buying a $10 million house is, easy going, he doesn't is care. easy going and and they can afford, they have more resources to afford this or afford that. And then we've found the reactions <laughs> no. across the board are, can be yeah. so divergent. And, and that's, what's, that's the psychological part of what the agreement of purchase and sale can never encapsulate, right? We're never going to get it because we don't anticipate that thing, the, the, the thing that's going to trigger them. And they literally get triggered by, we've seen, very small things. Yes. Um, I know we're going to talk about floods later. Those are very big things. I think, but I think the, the floods are becoming a um, like representation 100%. of all the Absolutely. things. And I've always, let's kind of jump into it also, is that I've always said to clients, I don't love long closings. You and I have talked about long closings. I don't like long closings. They're like, why? Why? What's wrong with long closings? I'm like, well, things can happen. You know, it can happen floods. Yeah. So we had one that we dealt with. And, and I'm dealing with, you have to understand, we had this massive, you know, 100 year rainfall. And in the 100 year rainfall, if you're closing, was you signed your agreement before the rainfall and you're closing after the rainfall, you're likely dealing with moisture in mm -hmm. your house. And so we've had everything from 
complete gut jobs where they're replacing furnaces, all appliances, the floors are gone, the walls are gone, insulation is gone. And the insurance companies don't care about your closing. No. They don't care when you're, they're not gonna like, oh. Well, by the way, they were all, there was no one, the one that we dealt with, I was scrambling to get quotes. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody was literally drowning. Like I called the waterproof guy, he's like, send me pictures, right? Like, I'm like, you can't do this on pictures. I need you to actually show up and tell me what it's, and, what this and, is gonna but, cost. And, and, Cause and this is for, a legal conversation, not just my <sighs> client's basement. And, but for, you know, uh, your connections, nobody's showing up, like, you know, you could, the, the, the insurance adjusters, the contractors, yeah. you know, at one, uh, one of them told me, look, we have 200 people in the field trying to yeah. just stay on top of the, the drying out process, let alone the reconstruction process. So the, the, the interesting thing is all the buyers are getting better houses than they contracted for. After so the this, flood. So interesting. <laughs> so, so that part of it, obviously, because there's a difference between, and I don't want to go all over the place, but I think this is the point that I want to kind of drive home and remind people yeah. about is, yeah. so when you buy a property, you are between then and closing, you get to show up on that day and get the same house same to purchase house. on that day. No better, okay? no worse. No better, no worse. So for example, if your stove, yep. <laughs> if the stove breaks between the time that that um, house is bought and the time that it closes, you as a seller are not obligated to buy them a brand new stove nope. and they are not getting one. Like there, that is not the expectation. Nope. Now you can go out, you need to, I mean, it gets messy, you know, well, if it's a Maytag and you can't, buy, like you go out and say, okay, I'm going to go get a refurb one. You know, you know what was great? I talked to a client on the weekend, uh, their air conditioner stopped working between agreement and closing. They actually spoke to the buyers themselves. They, oh, that's, oh, and oh. And they made a deal and it worked. When does that ever happen? Zero times. Okay. By the way. Zero okay. times. So here's a big PSA. <laughs> Don't ever talk. Don't ever talk. <laughs> <laughs> but they agreed. So, so he said, look, we were going to repair it. No, like in our world. I know. Like when you think of anything worse. so bad that could happen. Don't ever. I don't care. There's buyer visits or insist never no like, don't had, be there so i've had i had the most lovely <laughs> lovely people okay they were clients parents yep. i sold their family house yep. in whitby <laughs> beautiful home they were so home proud the most lovely human beings okay and the husband says to me the father says to me I really like, please let the buyers know. I love before it closes to walk them through it. I said, absolutely no. not. No, no, no. <laughs> I said, absolutely not. How about no? And he's like, what? Yeah. And he goes, why? I go, just the liability. You're going to say stuff. Well, God forbid. You're like, well, you know, back in 2007, yes. when it first. <laughs> since the flood, it's been great. <laughs> it's been dry since we changed the roof. Right. Well, what happened before that? Oh no! no you like, oh, do you remember that shooting in the backyard? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but like that in our world, that is the worst thing. And 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 I had a similar situation where like the buyers talked to each other after it was closed. Yeah. Which was still an issue, but anyway. But I mean, I think that um, I can't even remember what we're talking about. That was uh, we're, so oh, funny. I was just saying air conditioner because. The, the air conditioner broke down between closing and my fries are ready and, and otherwise. And then what happened was, um, you know, they said, look, do you want us to repair it or do you just want to take the money for the repair? So they ended up taking the money for the repair and we're crediting on the statement of adjustments and it's done. So on that note, yeah, always do that. Yeah. If there is an issue, don't, by the way, I am right now cash, dealing cash. with, right. I am now dealing with a similar issue, we are past closing, but yep. everyone's being good human beings. Yep. So it's all going very well. There will come a point where someone's just gonna need to pay for it. And and that's at the end of the day. And maybe it might be me. Cause I just, I cannot chase the appliance guy like anymore. Like if I'm a buyer. I can't do it. My hourly rate is more than what it'll cost me to pay these people and out And we just talked scope. about that before too. And the buyer. Our hourly rate? Well, no, you have an hourly rate. We yeah. talked about I really. Wish I did really the uh, the opportunity cost of the time it takes us to try and meet the expectations or fix things isn't worth it on these really really small things and so it's it's such a difficult grind for professionals 
because sometimes we just can't meet the client's expectations even on the smaller things yeah, unbroken it can be it can be t it can definitely be tough it, depending it, on the client tough. and then we but, spend a ton of time and i don't I think you know this. I don't charge for that time. I'm just trying to. I know you're so I'm just trying to get way. there. You know what I mean. I want you are really probably there. the only lawyer that'll get on the phone and talk someone like through something without charging them. I don't because I'm just trying to get them to the place, and it's so stressful and it's so I know, emotional. But you're a good human being, anyway. But I will say that if that opportunity, you have to remember that someone might say, "Ugh, I don't want to deal with it. Let the sellers just get it fixed and then I don't have to deal with it. I just want everybody to understand that we can write that into an <laughs> offer, but if it's not done the way you want it to do, it's not matter. up to you. Can't, you can't control it. No. So if someone says, you know what, like that window's not closing properly. Yeah. Um, I want, I'm going to write in that the seller is going to make sure that that window is in good working order. Um, so their uncle Sam comes over and puts some WD-40 in and you, you come it. in on closing going still not working, a court of law will not, and by the way, that's your only, re re like, Where it's are you gonna done. Go? Small claims court. Well, it's the same thing about that, like, I, I love when they're, when this, the, the buyer's agent's like, oh, we'd like to book our last walkthrough. I'm like, yeah. to do what? To I mean, why. I get it. Listen, at the end of the day, if it's flooded the day before yeah, or it's yeah. flooded the day you should after, see that. you should see it for sure. Absolutely. I'm just saying, as we've said, the front door could be kicked in. And you're still you closing. And you also, in that walkthrough, you don't get another inspection. Well, yeah, you don't, don't start done. flushing toilets. Don't it's start done. flushing toilets. Don't, don't, don't tell me, you know, oh, you know, one of the burners <laughs> is half coming on. Too late, too late. Right? And what uh, do you, what do you realistically want me to do? <laughs> but, 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 but. But time and time again, what you and I are seeing is it, it's not what you and I might <clears throat> consider material. It's emotionally material. Yeah. It's a visceral response, but it surely is not financially material because otherwise we would be talking about breach of contract right. and whether or not we should or should not close. But the, so the law seems really clear if it's something small, you have to close the transaction and reserve your rights after closing. And then you can go sue them in small claims court. Nobody does that. Who is the time and the emotion? I had an agent call me on her final walkthrough of a condo. <laughs> and she goes, the master shower, the principal shower, the principal shower bathroom, um, the water pressure's not- The water pressure. The water pressure's not great. I've had water so pressure in condos. I, yeah, <laughs> so um, our expectation is this will be fixed by tomorrow. No. By closing, and I go- No. So, so first of all, even if I could, <laughs> I'm not finding a plumber that's going to come in and deal with that today. <laughs> but Second of all, the water pressure was that like that the entire time that condo has been in existence. So no, no, like if so, this is my advice as we go forward, because I truly have seen it time and time again on both sides. We are not demonizing anybody. We know how Don't hard know. it is on both sides. We know people are listen. Everybody is in tough times. It is tough times. There's lots of fear of a recession. You know, interest rates have been really high. Everybody's worried about what's going on. There could be World War III. I don't know. We're not saying that. What we're trying to share with everybody is, is that don't leave to chance that someone is going to allow you to um, ask for anything. And by the way, that can be as easy as a buyer visit. If it is important, if you're going to do renovations and you need four buyer visits, write the Please floor. put them in. Right, put them in. If there's something that you want to fall, as I always say to my clients, decide on what sword you want to fall in. Fall on. Yeah. Do you want to fall on the price? Do you want to fall on the renovation? Do you want to fall? What do you want to fall on? And we will take it to the ends of the earth to make sure it happens for you. But if it's that important to you, don't do it after. And be as specific as you can. We, you know, shelving. We talked about shelving. Oh, we've had shelving. You oh know, God, shelving. the bookcases come off the wall. No, they don't come off the wall. We're taking them, not taking them. And sometimes sellers are frankly just lazy in that they don't want to call got junk and pay nine hundred dollars well, to have this stuff taken away. Had, it comes down to you know, we had a deal that we did to recently where yeah. they uh, refused to leave yeah. um, shelving on the wall because it wasn't written in, but then they left other shelving. Right. So shelving is a gray area, and even though it's a fixture and attached to the wall, it is a gray area. And the, so if and you really want to shelf, my, write it in. My TV brackets are another one uh, because, you know, we've seen some people will remove the brackets and some people will leave the brackets. 
And if you take one of those giant brackets Huge off the wall, hole. there's enormous holes in the drywall and you oh. and they might not be able to. I had a horrible experience yeah. with that. And the agent goes, that's fine. And I'm like, you it's think that's fine? fine? That's what you told your client? You thought that there's was drywall fine? drywall missing. Oh like, my God, I know. I, and, and, and again, you know, we have a first time home buyer. They uh, have their pizza and their wine and they're with their significant other and they open the door and all they see is drywall on the floor where the where the right. where the mount was was taken yeah. off and common sense dictates that you know you should leave that thing for 200 what the 2 300 dollars that it or costs or ask your mount. agents like yeah, even if your you agent's it. not willing to pay for it do you have a handy guy you have got can guy. you help me arrange someone you got it. i mean again it's the same thing and i would say just treat everybody the way you'd want to be treated, but be that per and we've, I feel like we've done this episode and I just felt like it was such a good idea to re be reminded because again, the flood, when I was telling clients, like when I talk to people and they'd be like, how's your week going? I'm like, don't ask. And they're like, what? I go, oh, you know, I have a client's house that flooded and it's closing next week. And they're like, well, what happens with that? And yeah, you know what? Every single yeah. person asked that because they didn't know. And I said, well, you either take the amount of money off of the purchase price and they fix it. And we've done that. We did that, or which I highly recommend as the option. Personally, I would rather have control over how it was going to be fixed. Yep. Or you have to maybe extend the closing and have the seller fix it themselves. And that's what it comes down to, to anything. And you, and you know what was interesting about that particular negotiation was it was actually quite quick. Like well, we, because we, I was they, dealing they with had, a lovely agent who no, was but, in my but, office but she and we was respected a, each other. But she had she had uh, professional uh, people come in and look at it. Yes. You had professional people come in and it. And then it was like really just like, let's make a deal like a TV show, right? We went back and forth right. real quick and it got done, period, done. But and, and I thought it was great. And our clients also were great. I agree with you. Like the client was like, I get it. I'm on side. The client, client was also a lawyer. So he he's like, he's also very decisive. He was a lawyer. And he's a good human. But, but he also understood, look, the flood is out of my control. I, I didn't control yeah. this amount of damage. Yeah. I want to give them what they contracted for, but I don't have to give them more. I think we all just wanted to be reasonable and meet halfway. Um, but and, and, I think and also, and I'm well. sure that well. you um, can agree with this on your side, is that if you know the lawyer on oh, the other side, absolutely, absolutely. it's done, right? Absolutely. Is it done? If it's I'm like, do you know them? And you're like, yeah, I'm like, it's, it's done. It's much faster. Whereas same with me, if I know the agent on the other side and I have a good agent on the other side, it's done. It's 90% done. You can't necessarily get the sale done if they're not willing to decide on whatever. But if you have two buyer and seller who have hired agents, lawyers that they respect, that they are listening it, it to, just, it that they're help. it's it an advisory situation. And by the way, Absolutely. just like lawyers, you can go, I can go, Joel, I need some legal advice. And I go, you know what? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. But you know what? I'm not going to go that way. Uh, uh, right. Oh, oh. And, That's and, fine. and we talk and about that. And same with me. Yeah. Like, I, I, like I have a client who I keep saying to him, please don't buy a condo townhouse. Right. Please don't, please don't buy a condo townhouse. And he's like, no, I love condo townhouses. I love them. And I'm like, okay. That's okay. That's his choice. By the way, people buy condo townhouses all the, all time. the time. That's just my personal opinion about condo townhouses, right? So again, the, and in, in summary, <laughs> in, in summary, you know, reasonable people acting reasonably come to reasonable conclusions. But by the way, that's not the norm right now. And so it's that's not. the point of us and doing saying, this episode. We're saying, don't be mean. Well, like, because everybody's be in a, But by the way, listen, all you have to do is like get on a highway and you can see everyone's just oh, in a bad mood. Oh, yeah. Everyone's in a bad mood. They're in a bad mood in the grocery store. They're on a bad mood. And like, listen, I, I wouldn't count myself out on that in some days. Don't get me wrong. You know, getting on... Everything is just a little bit more heightened these days. And it's the immediate, and so, immediate, pr it's the immediate tension, right? The seller wants to get as much as they can. The buyer wants to pay as little as they can. Everybody holds us to the standard of perfection, right? They don't mm -hmm. say to you, Rachel, you know, I'm looking really for kind of a half-assed job on, <laughs> on the marketing and, you know, I don't really care what price you get. Just yeah, do your just, best. Yeah, just, I mean, yeah. we, don't, we don't have that. They yeah. say they really do want perfection. Um, and also from their professionals, they'd like to pay us as little as possible. And they, you know, so these expectations that kind of were built up during COVID a lot, and then all of a sudden there was this huge shift and now we've had obviously other huge shifts and people are just not there in their heads yet. And I think when they get there, um, hopefully kindness will return. Um, and I, <laughs> it's always interesting, right? Because 
uh, we're both parents mm -hmm. and I think we try to be role models and I think a lot of people <laughs> <That's my kids. laughs> I think a lot of people forget right that this is what we do yeah and if if we were guiding our kids or guiding our giving uh, advice to colleagues or right. friends it would be to model kindness yeah and and and, and it that's a nice way to end it we and it is just, all, just, just all try and do a little better if you can and if you can't get good advice yeah. uh, and i really like what you said pick your poison which sword are you going to fall on because you can't fall on all of them it, it, you just can't i wish much. i could i wish i could get everything for my clients and i do you know, and you know that I fight for them, and we I know all, that you fight, fight. and that's why I always, I'll get on the phone and be like, Joel, and yeah. you're like, Rach, it's not going to happen, and I'm like, okay, it's not going to happen, because you know what, what am I, what are we going to do, we're going to make ourselves crazy, and go back and forth, and fighting, and then you are charging hourly rates, and we are doing, you know, we're getting into something very messy, and at the end of the day, let's just get what you need, and you know what, I always say, I'm like, these people are not going to be your friends. They're not your friends now. They no, won't be your friends. No, You'll no, never no, no. see them. No. You won't see them. They don't, you never have anything to do with them anymore. You just, you'll win because you own the house. You got or it. Or you sold the house. And it's done. And I've never, ever, by the way, had a seller when it was all over tell me that they weren't glad it was done. Of course. So they'll be like, you know what? I'm just glad it's, I'm so glad that I just said yes and it's done. You know, just, just talk about kindness. I, people from time to time send me thank you notes and I don't take them for granted I keep them and when I'm having one of those days you pull them out sometimes I pull them out because we need to be reminded that you know they're mo the vast majority of our clients are we, so great and we enjoy working with them and we enjoy the journey and we're we're taking them on this super personal yes, intimate and it's journey. an honor great honor to be Such involved in their life cycles right there's so many how many how many real it. estate lawyers are there we love it a gazillion we love it. how many real estate agents are gazillion uh, yeah we as humans and i think that's why we work well together appreciate our we clients sure we will go th we appreciate every single one of them that chooses us we work hard for them because we know there's lots of options there's lots of options so so if i had to say one thing at the end of the day it's more people you know, the vast majority of people are great to work with mm -hmm. and they're reasonable. There. What we're encountering is, you know, hopefully just a small has something percentage. to do. But there's more of it. It's yeah. just that was all it was. They, they, yeah. We're seeing more of it. And um, and I will look forward to um, having you back at Absolutely. the end of the fall to see what. Let's see what's happening. Because it's so busy. Are you busy? I'm busy. Things You're are busy, good. Huh? yeah. Things are okay. I'm busy. It's it's you know it's, new, keep it's saying... new normal, but but you know the phone keeps ringing, and you know I know the condo market's terrible, but I'm still doing condo deals, right? <laughs> and I know the interest rates are where they are, but people are still buying and people are still, still selling. Still selling. So it's busy. Can't tell. No, I know it's interesting. So we'll see what uh, the rest of the year brings to us. Let's see. Thanks, Joel. Cheers. My pleasure. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Bye.